Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus GTX 1060. Now I say today, but I've only just finished filming the Founders Edition review because I'm doing all, a load of these right on the trot because I've tested them all first and I'm filming all in one go. So go and have a look on the main channel if you've not seen the Founders Edition review so you can get a little bit more of the understanding of the basic card. And then that will also help you understand why this one is actually a little bit more special. So without further ado, okay. So the 1060, when we have a look at it, it does look very similar. And I should say that because this is the 1070, this is the 1080, and they are all exactly the same size. They're all based on the same PCB. It's all very, very similar. Now what we can see with the 980, you've got an eight and a six pin socket. This is the 970 and it still has the RGB backplate and it has an eight pin socket. But with the 1060, it retains the eight pin, which is kind of cool, but we, uh, we've lost the RGB backplate. Other than that, PCB is exactly the same. The cooler is exactly the same. Now the Strix cooler is actually really good this time around. One thing I should um, explain to you about the uh, Strix that we've got is uh, before Strix, you had Strix and then that was like their kind of base card. And then you had the Matrix, which was the all screaming card. Well now they've got the Turbo, which is the base one. Then they've got the Duo or the Dual, which is the middle one. And then you've got a Strix and then you've also got, which we have here today, the Strix Overclock. So this is the absolute top of the range um, 1060 that we're going to see. I don't think we're going to see a Matrix. And to be honest with you, when I asked about Matrix to Asus, they were just like, don't know, no plans. So at the moment, Strix is the all seeing, the all doing one. Now, obviously, we don't have any SLI bridges because that's a, a, an NVIDIA thing that they stopped. I've spoken about that in the uh, main review. but. Most points about this now is we've got a massive PCB, so it looks, apart from the uh, backplate, it looks just like the, the 1070, which I think is amazing. Um, but we've also got a cooler, which is essentially massively over specs for the card. So we're expecting to see some really low temperatures and we'll see how quick it can be as well. Okay then, so we said about a massively over spec cooler and the maximum temperature that we actually got when doing our Unigen tests as we do with all the other cards was 60 degrees, six zero degrees as an absolute maximum. Now the reason why that is quite a good thing is because uh, even the Founders Edition was 70 degrees. So the fact that we've got this absolutely whisper quiet with the fans hardly spinning at 60 degrees is absolutely mind blowing. I mean, to put it into context, we were looking in the mid 70s for the 1080 and the 1070. So this being around the 60 degree mark, it's ridiculous. Now you'd think to yourself, wow, that's gonna mean loads of overclocking. Well, weirdly, the uh, original 1060, the Founders Edition from NVIDIA, doesn't have GPU Boost 3. Now what GPU Boost 3 is, it does the overclocking for you. It's not that you've, a lot of people have been confusing it with saying that uh, there isn't any overclocking on the cards, they're pants. Well, it's because they actually do it for you now. There's a bit of software, uh, you know, it's in the um, drivers and it just essentially boosts loads more for you. And it gets, from my testing, within about 15 to 25 megahertz of the actual maximum stable clock speed, the boost will get all that weight up there for you and just does all the hard work for you. Strangely though, Nvidia thought it would be a good idea to not include that in the, um, the Founders Edition 1060. I don't understand why, and it did overclock like absolute bilio. The Founders Edition cards, they generally are good silicon, so they're not cherry picked in a sense that they sit there and go through them, but they're normally the chips from the middle of the silicon, which they just do end up benching and overclocking better. Uh, now the uh, the Founders Edition, I managed to manually overclock and fiddle around with by turning the power setting, uh, the power um, slider up and all that type of stuff. I did manage to overclock it to 2100 megahertz. 
It wasn't a particular lot of effort, but it did end up making it in, use increasingly more power. It went up from 240 uh, watts up to, I think it was 280 something watts. So it was about 40 watts extra. Now with the um, Strix, one thing I will say at the start is it's uh, only using 248 watts. So eight watts more than a standard uh, Founders Edition. Yet, because of the GPU Boost 3 and the fact that it's auto pretty much overclocking and boost itself to within an inch of its life, it's actually, uh, we had it, um, it was running 2050 megahertz without us doing anything to it. And that was the peak. Um, but then the average overclock or the average boost over an hour run in Unigen was actually uh, over 2000 megahertz. So it's consistently above 2000 megahertz. Now with the, we have to use the same benchmark every time because the way that the boost works is if it's not being utilized in a quiet part of the game or something that doesn't need um, as much processing power, they are actually designed to tail themselves back and save power. And that's another reason why they do so well. So when you people say about the fact that they're getting too hot, this clearly isn't getting too hot. It's actually just the power saving side of it. But like I said, consistently over 2000 megahertz in an hour long run on Unigen was absolutely like unreal in the fact that Asus have done some clever mumbo jumbo. I personally think that it's not a driver based thing. I think that the GPU boosting is something that's uh, enabled in the uh, BIOS. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some hack for the normal Founders Editions cards or whether the other companies are then going to uh, like follow suit or bring something similar out. I have tested another card and there's no GPU Boost 3 on that either. But there quite clearly is on this. Maybe it's something to do with the fact it's on a 1070 PCB. Don't know, but whatever it is, as far as uh, performance goes, it's literally up there. So when we said to you at the beginning about that the fact that it's one of the quicker Asus cards, it clearly is. And just running just out of the box to have it over 2000 megahertz on a card that, you know, comes in at 1700 megahertz uh, stock is absolutely unreal. Uh, it re got reflected in the scores as well, because with 3D Mark, uh, we went from 3000 uh, points up to 3215. Again, without having to worry. I did manage to get about another 50 odd points on this. Let me see if I can find it. 1060 overclock. So it's 3,340 uh, with the manual overclock. But don't forget, we were running significantly more. And again, with the fact that it's, uh, we know it's gonna be a center silicon chip. Um, uh, it was uh, doing that little bit better, but it did take manual involvement to get there. And this was kind of just running out like that out the box. With games and stuff, Again, sleeping dogs, we do this because we've got a nice range of stuff in the graphs. Most important thing before you start saying to me, you've not done enough tests. We do loads more tests, 11 games, three resolutions. They're all on the actual website and I, didn't wanna, I don't want to bring too many of them into the video because it just takes too long and yeah, people do just moan about even having to pause now. So we've just gone with that. So this, you can clearly see this is in, uh, it's up there with the really quick 1080s. And the reason why we've got the Hoff in there is because that is literally the fastest kind of 1080 that we had our hands on. So this is actually in front of a basic kind of Strix or um, a, a reference edition 1080. Uh, you can see it's clearly in front of the 480 down near the bottom as well. Now, uh, when we go on to uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, again, you can see it's a lovely little graph because uh, it's one of our new games. And you can also see that you've got the 480 at the bottom, 480 overclock, then you get the 1060, then you get the 1060 Strix. It's very linear. But, and this is one of the things that I did want to uh, get in here, and I've put this in on purpose, and I do want to draw attention to this, is that with um, Hitman, Hitman actually does favour the 480 a lot and what we can see with the uh, 480 and this is that it's above both of the Strixes whether this gets fixed later on in a driver we don't know but at this present moment in time in Hitman at least the 480 is clearly owning the green team cards so moving swiftly on to a conclusion because I have a lot of these to do and a lot of rendering to get done and let's face it you're going to be watching a lot of these videos I've not mentioned the price yet because I wanted to talk to you about the performance first. 
price, there is a lot of ACES tax on it. And that is, it's coming in at £329. Now, there are, uh, instantly, you're then kind of thinking to yourself, oh my God, they said there were going to be 250 with the $250 ones that they said were going to be coming out, um, the, those ones are going to be the very basic, boggo, horrible cooler ones. And I've not actually seen a card that's going to be rumoured at being £250 yet. The cheapest I've seen is £270. So when you go £270 up to uh, £330, what are you getting for your money? Well, instantly you're getting that GPU Boost 3, so it's gonna run as quick as daylight out the box, and uh, there's a lot of extra performance there over a normal stock one. Uh, what you also then get is ridiculously low temperatures, and you're essentially getting the PCB and the cooler from the 1080. The only thing that you're really losing from the 1080 and the 1070 cards is the fact that you've not got the RGB on the back of the card but you do still get it around this part of the card, which let's face it, not many of us can see, but you do get a little bit on the side. But anyway, you can turn the lights on, you can turn the lights off, you can set them to do what you want, you can set them to dance. But at the end of the day, you get yourself a 1060, which is probably going to be one of the better cards out there. If not the best card, only time is gonna tell, but it's got a back plate, an awesome cooler, really quiet, really cool, and the performance is just up there with it. So, what we are going to do is give it the OC3D Performance Award. And that is because it does it all for you. It's got the temperatures there, so it's got the thermal performance. It's got the, um, the, the sound kind of performance because it's intensely quiet. It's really quick, in fact, that it's up there with pretty much our overclocked results for the manual 1060 that we've done. It's there now. Uh, so it pretty much does everything for you, and it very much is a fit and forget card. To be honest with you, I like the fact that it looks a lot more expensive than it is because if you didn't really know about the, the, the light up backplate thing, um, it does look like a 1070. It's got a real nice bit of girth to it. It's got a real nice bit of weight to it. You do end up getting a, a quality product. And the other thing that you do kind of need to remember as well is it's got the 100% robot made process on it. So all the solders are really clean. It takes that, you know, human kind of mistake aspect out. It's flux free, the PCB is really smooth. So it's, it does end up being a really quality card. Now, if you're in the cheap end of the market because you want to save money, there are obviously going to be cheaper options. But if you're down in that 300 pound sort of market and you're wondering to yourself, should I spend another 30 quid? What can you really get for 30 quid nowadays? I mean, it wouldn't pay for a night out for most people. And uh, this is gonna be something that you're gonna be playing games on for, I would have thought, many months to come. Most people end up buying a graphics card like this and at least running it for 18 months or two years. So with those extra few quid, be uh, a worthy investment over something the same sort of price around the uh, Founders Edition side. Well, if it was me and it was the difference between the Founders Edition card and this for 60 quid, I'd be staying in for a couple of nights and getting that. But for now at least, that's the Asus Performance Award winning GTX 1060. Strix, Overclock, Super Duper, all that kind of stuff. I don't know why they've had to mess with the branding so much. Rog Strix and all that kind of stuff. But in the end, yes, there was a bit of Asus tax. But to be honest with you, I think it was worth it. But for now at least, this is Tony Tom Logan with another video for you, out.